taken one hour to drive here, I'll also take 10 minutes of your time. So whether you like it or not, I'm going to speak, OK? But all I'll do is try and make it little interesting, if possible. Uh, it's also difficult if you are the last speaker to talk something new, because I'm sure the illustrious speakers who have come right from yesterday morning up to now, Yuvraj was speaking just before me, I'm sure they would have covered most of the points, right? They would have covered a lot of points. So I'll just try and share my perspective. The points could be same. The perspectives could be a little different. Uh, I'll be happy if some of you can pick something out of this, OK? Uh, I'll also, of course, be very happy to take your questions uh, after the end of the presentation. So I'll quickly run through. You know, I was Googling, because uh, sometimes it's, it's really difficult to put your original thoughts. So you start with Googling, right, everything. So when I wanted to make a presentation for uh, this event, I was just Googling what are the kind of checklists, typically, which people should possibly have if they want to start up. And this is what I got uh, in terms of the GAN on net, right? The seven essential startup steps. The resolution is a little uh, problematic, I think. So you are able to see five here, but we'll see if we can. Do your market research, show yourself the money, hire a, bis, a good business attorney, hire a good accountant, decide on business structure, and then add two more some such uh, kind of thing, right? And I thought I'll add one of my points, and that point is don't follow such kind of bullshit. Now some goddamn journalist who has probably never done entrepreneurship in his life wrote those seven steps. And that's what happened most of the times when you look for advice. So I often say this, you either get good advice or free advice. You have to make a choice what you want. Are you understanding? Right? A lot of times, uh, and I visit so many campuses, my week doesn't end without a visit to four or five campuses, right? And there's a new wave of entrepreneurship, there's a new wave of startup, I want to start up, I have an idea, how do I go about, and the kind of uh, registrations and audience which have come here in the last two days, almost about 2,500 to 3,000 people, is a testimony of that, right? People want to get into the startup ecosystem. But then, there are a lot of things that you need to know, you need to understand before you get into this ecosystem so that you don't burn your hands, you don't burn your fingers, right? So. My first advice to all of you would be any advice you take, take it with star condition supply, right? What worked for me is not necessarily what will work for you. And what did not work for me is not necessarily what will not work for you, right? So please take advice from everyone who gives you advice, but you should have some kind of filtration mechanism. You should have some kind of processing done so that you know what you want to absorb and what you want to eject out. Are we okay with that? I want to start up and how do I go about it, right? This is what the whole nation wants to know. And uh, more often than not, people say, you know, every day, I mean, I'm, I'm quite uh, active on a social network like Facebook and all that. And the day doesn't end without five, six new people. I'm not talking with the existing people of friends and network uh, uh, on my Facebook, but new people ping and say, I have an idea, sir, how do I start up? Or I have an idea, how do I get funding? This is the kind of question which almost everyone seems to have. And I'm sure if we take a random poll here, almost all of you sitting here also will probably have the same kind of question. You know, it's, it's as if there's a direct correlation between I have an idea and I want to start up. And then there is someone who's responsible to fund you. As if it's, it's your birthright to ask for funding, right? Till yesterday it was placement, today it is funding. OK, so let's see. Uh, I, I have a few thoughts here which I wanted to share with you. Uh, because the other part of the slide is not visible, I'll talk about it. Now, a lot of times what you think as an idea is not an idea. It's just a random thought, like Yuraj was telling, right? You're sitting in the toilet seat and you suddenly get a thought and you think that's an idea. Or you're driving back, you see traffic jam, you see an ambulance honking behind and you think that's the great idea which you can, you know, start building something which can clear the traffic light before the ambulance comes and all that. This is the kind of random thought which comes day in and day out, right? Every few hours, there's a new thought which comes up. People sitting here will probably have an idea. Instead of listening to this boring talk, can we have a quick multi-party game which can work here with the participants sitting in the auditorium? OK, so there can be a lot of thoughts which come. A thought is not an idea. For it to become an idea, I think you should go through some process. And that process is the process of validation, right? Uh, the validation, by the way, the moment someone gets a thought like this, what next? People say, I want some funding. Now, no one is going to put their money just because you got an idea. 
that's something very important to understand. Now, the moment uh, you get a thought, I think you should go through. This is troubling me a lot. Uh, I'll leave this presentation. I'll talk because I've made this presentation, so I know what is there in that. Uh, the moment you get a thought, it's very important that you process this thought and convert it into an idea. And the thought becomes an idea if you do a few things, and that includes validation. Lot of times, lot of us, you know, with the original thought that we get, come here on the stage or go to some pitch or go to some investor, go to some mentor and say, well, this is my thought or this is my idea and I want to build about this. I'm very passionate about it, right? But then that mentor or that advisor or that investor will tell you, I'm sorry, I've looked at this idea 10 times before, right? I've looked at this five years ago. So whatever you get as an idea, in fact, we keep telling this in the industry. If you've thought about it, someone has already done it. That's the speed at which the world works today, right? If you've thought about it, someone has already done it. That's the speed at which the world works today. So it's very important for you and very imperative that you do an analysis of your thought and you go through what is called as customer validation. Lot of times as technology professionals, what we think is the pain point of the customer, what we think is the best feature in our application need not be what the customer wants. So you're not building a product because you like it. You're building a product because it has to be sold. You're building a product because someone has to use it. And if someone has to use it, you have to ask them, what is their problem? What is their pain point? How much can they afford? Are they okay with this kind of interface? Are they comfortable with this kind of technology? Are you getting me? So it's very important that you do a good customer analysis. And you can't be going to your friends, you can't be going to people who say, wow, this is very good, or who are sympathetic to you, and say, OK, please do it, and then come back to me. I think you have to have a very random uh, kind of a sample size and a reasonable sample size. If you want your product to be used by 1 million people, then you should probably talk to 1,000 people. If you want your product to be used by 1,000 people, then you should probably meet at least 20 people. You know, It should be a proportionate sample size. And these are all iterative in nature. It's not as if today you'll do the sampling and tomorrow you'll start building, and day after tomorrow you'll go and sell the product. This has to be a continuous cycle, which you keep doing. Every time you build a feature, you go back to your customer, check with him, get to know about it, get their feedback. So you get a thought, you convert it into an idea. To convert it into an idea, one of the things is, customer validation. The second important thing is competitor analysis. Lot of you, when you come from colleges, have this problem of saying, no one has ever done this. Well, if no one has ever done this, my advice to you is you should also not do it. You should also not do it. Because if you say that no one has done it, to me, it's like saying God is not there. I just told you a few minutes back, if you have thought about it, someone has already done it. That's the speed at which the world works. And you have to keep going back and searching, and then you'll realize that there are at least 5, 10, 15, 20 other people who are probably working on something very, very, very similar. If not the same, very similar. And that very similar would be like 99.99% same. Right? So it's not, not possible in today's world when you have all kinds of people in, across the world connected with each other, thinking about new ideas day in and day out, to really be able to say that no one has ever done this or no one has ever attempted this. But yes, even if people have already worked on this kind of an idea, if people have got into this kind of an idea, you would definitely probably have a scope for having your own innovation quotient. That innovation quotient could be in terms of the user interface of that product. It could be in terms of the size of that product. It could be in terms of uh, the cost of the product. It could be localization. So there will always be some opportunity for you to tweak it, to improve it, to change it a little, and have your own innovation quotient in that. Right? So there is a difference between saying no one has ever done it versus knowing very well about your competitors. And by the way, there can be more than one player who can exist in the same space. So if Uber was there, it didn't stop Ola from coming. But then you should also know there can't be a fourth and a fifth and a seventh and an eighth Ola which can exist. So you have to have a reasonable understanding of the market size and how many players can exist. Are we OK with that? Now, once we have this idea validated, I think there are some other important things also which you need to understand. And uh, one of the other important thing, and this is especially to this audience, which is more or less a tech audience, right? Most of you sitting here are engineers. How many engineers sitting here? Almost all of you, right? Now, I have a small problem with engineers. Uh, <laughs> I'm also an engineer. 
Uh, about 18 years back when I completed my engineering, people smiled and said, oh, you've done your engineering. I'm sure today also people look at you and smile and say, oh, you're doing your engineering. But the smile has changed. It has become a little sarcastic. Agree? No. Yeah. So I think it's time we have to rebuild, rebuild that brand engineering. And the world is with you because there was a phase in the last 10 years when people said, if you want to be successful, you have to do an MBA. I don't know how many of you have heard about it, but the last 10 years was, if you want to be successful, you have to be an MBA. But then if you see in the last two, three years, right from the WhatsApp of the world or the Facebooks of the world or the startups in India, which are getting more and more popular and who are you know, becoming big celebrities, it's all driven by the tech engineers. So I think it's a wonderful time for you to come out of colleges and be technology engineers and reclaim the glory of engineering. But then, for that, you also need to know technology. It's a very, very big uh, disappointment when, as an engineer, you walk to an investor or you walk to someone and say, I have an idea. I'm searching for someone who will build this for me. Now, what kind of engineer are you if you can't build your own product? You understand? So it's very important that if you want to be a startup, forget about being a startup, even if you want to be a good employee in an organization, I think you need to be very good at building things. And that's where uh, you saw some of the product pitches which were there a few minutes back. A lot of them came from this program which we call it as Excite, which is essentially an ecosystem driven initiative. You have TASK, which is Telangana Academy for Skills and Knowledge. You have HiSIA, Hyderabad Software Enterprise uh, Association. You have JNTU, Professor Govardhan is sitting here. He has been one of the key persons who's driving this initiative. And uh, this is an initiative where we said, for about five weeks, we should have the engineers coming from various colleges, mixing with each other, working right from ideation phase to prototyping, and then showcasing it to the world outside. Because unless you showcase it to the world outside, you won't know whether your idea is original or not. You won't know what you're working on is worthwhile or not. A Lot of times we think about the problem in the lab, and we build the solution in the lab. That's not going to help. And that's where my next point comes, which is it's very important that you need a mentor in your life. It's not enough just to know technology. It's not enough just to have an idea. It's very important that you have some mentor in your life. Are you understanding? Only then, if you have survived these first three stages and you build a prototype with someone in the industry says that it's in the right direction, that's when probably you should start looking at funding. There's no question of going to an investor before you complete these three stages. Because even if you go to them, they're not going to put their money. Just think about it. If your parents are not ready to put money on that idea, why would an investor who's a third party put money on that, right? So it's very important that your idea is validated. It's very important you have a prototype in place. And for that prototype to be in place, you need to be learning how to build things. And then you should have a mentor who validates, who probably supports, who backs you, who's a sounding board, who tells you not to make those initial mistakes and handholds you. Now, obviously, the next question will be, how do you get all this, right? It's very easy for me to stand here and say, do this, do this, do this. But the question you'll probably have is, how do you do this? And that's where programs like Excite, and based on the success of Excite, now we have come up with an initiative which is called Makerspace. So there are incubation centers, innovation labs, which are called Makerspaces, which are being established across the colleges. As a pilot, last year about 12 colleges started this makerspace, and this year there are going to be about 35 colleges which are going to have this makerspace, where essentially all this that we spoke about, almost all the things that the speakers have been speaking about from yesterday till today, about the kind of things you should probably be careful about when you're building something, when you're trying to build your own startup, is what is being developed there. And since a lot of you sitting here are students, I would urge you to go back to your colleges. There was a meeting two days back when the directors, principals, heads of departments of all the colleges under JNTU were there together. We had a dialogue with them about the makerspace. I would urge you to go back and talk to your colleges and ask them more about it, right? A lot of this information is available on website, Facebook, and all that. So I won't take your time talking about it. But uh, you have nothing to lose. And there is a difference between an entrepreneur and a startup. While everyone sitting here cannot be a startup, everyone sitting here can be an entrepreneur. Right? An entrepreneur is someone who takes ownership of things. An entrepreneur is someone who controls his or her own life. So it's, it may not be possible for each one of you sitting here as an engineer to get out tomorrow and start your own firm. 
right? There may be a lot of constraints. There may be a lot of you. You you may not be as excited as someone else to start up, but nothing stops you from being an entrepreneur. And I'll just end this with one line, which is, you know, a lot of times people ask me, who's your favorite entrepreneur? And whom should we follow to be a good entrepreneur? My answer is very simple. I don't think you need to follow the Steve Jobs of the world. I think the biggest and the best entrepreneur that all of you can follow is your own mother, right? There's no bigger entrepreneur than a mother. And you are a startup of your mother, OK? So to me, it's you don't have to go far to see what an entrepreneur means. A mother doesn't come up with reasons. A mother doesn't blame others. If you can follow the attitude of your mother, then I think you are the most successful entrepreneur in the world. Thank you so much. Thank you.